Good afternoon. Well, this is our wrap-up speaker today, and uh, I want to welcome you all again to the Evolving Times Expo. Hope you're having a lot of fun. Remind you that the show goes on tomorrow. We're here from uh, 10 o'clock until 6 o'clock. All new speakers again tomorrow. So, uh, I'd like to introduce, she's always with us and, and she always has a following. And uh, today, uh, she's going to peek into the other world that she sees, lots of worlds. And she's going to use her psychic abilities to bring the answers closer to this world. And only Nancy can do this. So I'd like to introduce you, Nancy, Nancy Mance. six more of safe. So if we want to plan a vacation together, we can go together. Okay? Look, I can't reach this. And I have six more. This is a book if you're interested. Okay, it's fun. And we'll talk about the cover too. Uh, that's an interesting story. I don't know how many of you read my book. It's kind of fun to make it short, sweet, easy to read. And gosh, I'll recognize me in there. That kind of stuff. I'm going to be on some cable TV shows. Uh, downstairs, when we did the book signing, here's a listen of the times of the latest TV show, cable TV show I've been interviewed on. It was been last Wednesday. So here's a listen of the times. I'm going to give a tour of the old cemetery coming up on the 18th of October. I've already been down there. You know I love spirits and have really fun with them. I find them. Uh, I have unusual ability to know, to see them, feel them, hold them, so you can feel them. And I do this so often that people are starting to believe in it. <laughs> That's true. They are there. And I see uh, Andrew Jackson Davis. How many of you read his work? Uh, he's been gone for a couple hundred years, but he wrote 29 volumes on three, three months of education. The volumes of books are this thick. He describes them what spirit or looks like. A, an oval shaped like an egg, uh, cylinder looking, creamy colored. And uh, I had been seeing these shapes for a while. I thought it was kind of nuts. And then someone had read that volume and showed me a print, his impression of what they look like, and guess what? I'd seen the same thing. That's what we're really about. All right, and then with their ego, they present the silhouette of what the last ego was, and that's what we find in the cemetery sometimes, because those people get stuck. So at Broadway and 10th, there's going to be a tour of that cemetery. It's going to be the oldest 1860s. So I've been through it once. I'll take one more tour. We're going to find some new goodies. <laughs> you know what I'm here to say. <laughs> it's interesting because I got into this world five years ago without any belief system. You what? You want me to do what? You want me to believe in what? And if anybody from an engineering background understands this stuff, I do now. Some of you from analytical backgrounds, you know what an engineer thinks like? Guess what I'm coming from. So uh, that should be fun, and I have a lot of flyers on that. And most of you who have known me you know that I do try to keep up with my calendar. Uh, my book review, Talks of the Angels, and a price sheet of things I do now offer. I gave a talk recently on closure, life's closures. It's really interesting. I had some really good reviews on it. So if you're interested in something like that, that would be at my booth. Only the book signing will they cover the book. Okay? So put that down. Do you have a booth downstairs? You have a booth at 55. 1955. And I keep the same booth. It's been four or five years now running. The same number is kind of easy to remember where I'm at. That's kind of fun, isn't it? And um, when I prepared this little blip in here, who are you going to call? My next book, the one I'm writing in conjunction, I'm writing two at the same time. One is called uh, Ghost Goblins and Spirits. 
And that is being written in conjunction <coughs> with another book called Death and Transition. I'm what we call a multidimensional sighted person. What was your stuff? Say it slower. <laughs> well, my mind thinks that way, so give me that privilege. What it means is, is that I see you as energy, as, as entertainment to me to read and step into it. And I enjoy it so much. A lot of people like just being around me because they find me so interesting. <laughs> people say, Nancy, you really can't entertain this. You really, you really know what to say on a level I can understand it. Remember, I'm an engineer. I break it down to the smallest components. I also understand that if I don't understand it, neither will you. And I think that's why God picked me, because I break it down to make it simple and fun. I no longer take it seriously. I enjoy the process of knowledge. Knowledge is power. Power relieves fear. It takes away our, fear, away our fear. And if there's anything I've learned is that living your life to the fullest is loving who you are, being not afraid of death, because once you're not afraid of dying and death, you really will know what true living is. And I'm trying to relieve and take away that fear because being a multi-dimensional sighted person, I'm seeing a lot of stuff. And if I see it, understand it, and I say, your grandfather's here and this is what that person looks like, I'm going, wow, I can't believe I said that. And they go, you're right, that's what they <laughs> Where's my Irish girl in here? Grandpa came to me, I'm still, okay. One day she comes to me and she says, I'm doing drawings. And this Englishman tried to be there and how allow me to draw him. And the other grandfather comes up and says, no, draw me. Whoa. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> you want me to do what? what, what? <laughs> he rushed so fast in my face, it took me off. I just went like this. Remember that? And he says, draw me, because I'm more important. So part of here. <laughs> We're all important. And he said, please draw me. She wants me to be recognized. I'm one with the corn cob pipe. A little bit of tears shows up. Oh, my favorite corn cob. No, no, no. So I drew him as she remembers him. See, they have such a need to be recognized. Anyway, I'm a good person. <laughs> Let me talk from the beginning. My little blip says, uh, ghost goblins and spirits. I wish I had a long cord. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm free. I know. Oh, don't tell. Um, anyway, no one's watching, right? Yeah. <laughs> the woman's loose. <laughs> I've done 42 to 44 sessions in the last four days. You tired just hearing about that? Now, let's move this just a little bit more down. What I want to do is I would like to speak a couple of uh, words about what this is about. Because a lot of you, how many of you just do this because I don't want everybody's hand? I've never seen or heard of me before. New meat. Yeah. <laughs> Can we leave now? No, no. <laughs> New people, I love it. <laughs> um, I believe that God wants me in this world because I do have a sense of humor. Um, I love people. Um, I want to teach. Uh, I want you not to be afraid of living or dying. I want you to accept who you are and the lessons of your life and love it. To pull yourself out of your body and to be objective enough to understand that her lesson is her path and you don't buy into it. If you don't buy into it, then you're not trapped by it, then you can live your life and learn from her lesson also. Okay. So every time I do a talk, I like to do readings to show how fun this can be. Okay, so those of you who raise your hand if you're intimidated by me and go, oh, she just... <laughs> don't raise your hand if you don't want me to answer your questions, but it can be fun. All right, so I want to talk real quick. Are you okay with where I'm jumping all over the place? <laughs> the cameraman is going... <laughs> He's a good friend. I'm so glad he has patience with me. Um, <coughs> we're talking about ghost goblins and spirits. And I want to say just a few words because I really would like to read you. That's why you're here because you haven't seen something like before. <laughs> um, we're mentally dimensional ourselves. 10% of what I see in this group without my glasses on, I don't like to wear glasses because it feels like it infringes me. So even though I can't see you very well, I can see the color of your hair. Um, it's only 10% of what real reality is. 90% of what I see, I feel, I taste is what is not being visible to the rest of us. As I step into these girls here, I know I read you earlier. Hello. I don't know if both of you are a nice lady, so 
I will just pick one of them. I'm right handed, so I sit the voice like this, and I still get back to one of them right here, too. <laughs> I'm very physical like this. Say this young lady sitting here, but if I stood her up, turn her sideways, she's only that wide. But when she sits down to this wide, when I read people, I move my energy from me to her. And I call myself a natural, I don't use a tool, I blend with people. Doesn't matter where they are, so if you're talking to me and say, I want to know what my brother's like in New York, I go, I'm over there, I'm visiting him, I'm becoming with him. What I find real interesting is when I step into somebody, I step into this area here. It took me a while to figure out why I was always looking at, knock, at, at neck line, necklines. Uh, men would go like this, women do this, you know. <laughs> and I go, what's wrong with my eyes? Can I keep them above the neck here? <laughs> and it's because this is where I enter. People have said to me, after a while, they said, you know, it's funny because I feel pressure right here. Or, and they'll say, I feel sucking in the middle of my chest. It's because this is where I travel. And when I come into this space, I go in and I fall just a little bit. And then it's wonderful. But every one of you feels differently to me. I give talks on vibration. Every one of you has a texture, a taste. Some of you feel like uh, purple, like in a velvet uh, piece of cloth. Some of you feel thick like a... I don't know what I'm talking about, fog. Some of you like little bubbles. Some of you taste to me. Some of you boggle. Like, it's just wonderful. I never know what I'm expecting. And I cannot use my eyes for a reading. If you come to me, she has stripes on. If she came to me and I said, well, there's turquoise stri stripes ahead of me, that could be a totally different picture than if I entered her space. We cannot judge a, a reading on a visual. I can never know really what's going on. It's that moment of magic that I become with you, that you open up and allow. Okay, that's wonderful, wonderful. So then, when I read you, I travel your time. I can go in there and I can travel. It's wonderful, wonderful. So that's what it feels like for a living being to be with me, and I be with them, and I share the moment. And people out there say, oh, you're so entertaining. I look and go, well, you never really was entertained. <laughs> Boy, do I have notes. <laughs> I got a couple thousand tapes of hours. Of, of talks like this, and I'll go back and pull some information. I'll be writing for the rest of my life. You know, maybe on you. <laughs> uh, I won't use names, you know, I'm really careful. But it's wonderful, the stories. And I'll look at, at an airplane ride, going across the country, 3,000 miles to New York. Look at all the cities, look at all their neighborhoods, look at all the families.